<clears throat> well, let me do this real quick. Um, today is the, right now I'm recording on the 8th, it's between the 7th and the uh, 9th of March, so 7th. Happy birthday, Eric. Happy birthday, Mark. I do it every year. They don't know, but you know, I just do it wherever I am. Well, I mean, I usually do the one that, don't worry about that part. It's a long day. It's been a very long day. Usually at the end of the day, well, I only drink like tea in the morning or smoothie in the morning, but this day I'm drinking water. And you notice I put this thing on top like that. That's my sound strange, but uh, when I, you know, I, was, I grew up Catholics. I do the whole catechism thing, you know. But one of the things, one of the things the Catholic Church, well, a lot of religions do that. You know, God can see you every place. You know, wherever you are, God can see you. I go like, huh? Well, I then then somebody um, uh, well, somebody visited the museum. They came back to tell me it hey, was at the museum. This kid, and they said that uh, the the in the spider exhibit, they say there's a spider within six feet of wherever you are on the planet. Then it got to thinking, you know, because when I was taking uh, uh, logic and comparative religion back there in the 70s, you know, I came up with like, you know, God is like a, you know, the whole God concept is like a, you know, like a, just a thing that goes through everybody, that connects everybody. I didn't give it, I didn't give it no, no, no face, whatever it is. Actually, my, my concept of God I really like is the American Indians when they say the great mystery. Really good. Anyway, so then I thought, wait a second. If, if, if God is in everything, including, you know, spiders, whatever have you, and then you got dust mites in the air, that means that God actually can see you. You, you observe any place you are. But you don't want to hear all that stuff. Um, actually, it's interesting because of what I did, I talk about God and all these religious people. We're in, we're in Africa. And the most destroy, disturbing thing is the amount of, of Africans that worship basically a white Jesus. I, I, I want to be, I, I, I do want to be racial, but it's kind of strange to me. I mean, oh, so anyway, I was in the, uh, the, the uh, Victoria Hospital, which is very close to where I live, uh, because I had to get some paperwork. Because, oh, well, well, I won't say, I got to get some paperwork. So I had to get uh, some tests done um, for our. Uh, Radiology, you know, and also a medical thing. So, you know, radiology, I ain't got no TV and nothing like that. Medical thing is all signed off. So, that's cool. I can continue on my way to uh, dealing with the Department of Home Affairs. We'll do that some other time. But anyway, so, um, so it's, it's, no, it's a government hospital. And it's actually a famous hospital because it, it had the first uh, African, black African, native African, what do you want to say? Uh, to have a, a nursing degree came from Victoria Hospital here in the Eastern Cape, Alice. Hey, a little fun fact for you, or a little fact fact for you. And so I'm sitting there, so there's a lot of older people, and so I'm sitting there in line, la da da The next guy next to me starts talking to me, we talking, we talking, we talking, and then he asks me stuff that I'm doing, you know, I'm talking about da 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 all my stuff. And then eventually I asked him, we moved someplace, I asked him, you know, what does he do? He said, well, he's not really working now, he's taking some kind of stuff, but he, he's going to be a preacher, you know what I mean, for the uh, Jehovah Witnesses. Okay, so sometime a little bit after that, I was talking to him, and and I said, and we just, I, I like to engage people with you know knowledge and Bible, whatever. I said, well, he asked me something about religion. I, I said, well, you know, I'm not a Christian. You know, I'm, I'm a de I didn't even tell him I was a deist because that would confuse everybody. I said, no, I'm not a Christian. But if I was, I would deal with only I would deal with the red letter edition of the Bible. And then he's he's he said something very strange. He said, I don't want to talk about anything else. I don't want to talk about anything. Well, I don't want to talk to you anymore. And he just stopped talking to me. Interesting. Anyway, I just thought I'd throw that out there. But the, the business I had today uh, is um, I realized that, I mean, as you may or may not know, I'm not really dealing with what, what's going on with, with ADOS, well, I am, but not not the way other people are doing it, right? At this present thing, they, they snipe this person, they do that person. I'm not, I'm not thinking about that. You know, uh, I did a whole thing with pre, post, you know, ADOS. Um, but I'm really thinking about, you know, what, what, what can I do? You know, what's my lane? Now, you see, I'm an audio dramatist. That's what I do. You know, I mean, that's my, I mean, the famous thing, you know, I say, if you cut me, I bleed audio drama. What's audio drama? It's, it's theater for the microphone. It's, it's easy if you understand that. Um, and I'm, very, well, I'm theater for the microphone. I'm actually very good at it. Okay. So I was thinking, you know, what could, what could I do? Uh, you know, I don't want to do, you know, it's like, you know, people, they jump into stuff and they're just reacting to headlines or whatever. Have you. I'm not downing anybody. I like a lot of people, you know. The, one of my favorite people is this guy. He says he has a high school. He only had a high school diploma. He took some other some 
some um, technical courses, whatever it is. And he has his own. He has like five. He has his own business, right? And so on his on his blog, on his you know YouTube things, he's always cursed. He just cursed that 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 that. And so some, I guess it was a woman. Yeah, a woman got on there and said, you know, you would get a lot more listens if you wouldn't curse. So I wrote back, you know, this is this is grown men. We we talk any way we want. She wrote back something else. But the point really is this. There's enough people out here doing what they do that if you don't like somebody cursing, then don't do that. I personally, I like it. Don't get me wrong, I don't curse. But you know, I look, here's my shows that I, I listen to on a, week, a weekly thing. Uh, of course, there's uh, there's, there's Breaking Brown Break on, on Monday. You're, you're Monday night, I'm, I get it Tuesdays. Yeah. Yeah, Monday night, uh, on Tuesdays, it's uh, 5150. Hey, what? I love Corey and the gang. Corey and Darlene, hey, you know, so sometimes, you know, I'm cracking up. I love them, right? They just call me a street dude, you know? Okay, then then on Wednesday, then on Wednesdays, I deal with Yvette again. Or, you know, well, yeah, Wednesdays, Yvette again. And also, of course, uh, Neely Fuller Jr. from um, um, Talktainment. Um, and that's really about it. Then I have, oh, of course, I have Max Kaiser on Monday, Wednesdays, and Friday. You know, Max Kaiser and Stacey Herb. Herbert. And then, then there's the various other things, like I might run into a true power's mind, or I may see you know, one of these other white liberal kind of things, you know, the, the, the Kalinskis and the, you know, the whatever. Um, and so I look at them. Well, I actually like David Packman. I think he's very paced in them. So I, I like that guy. Um, there's some people I'm certain miss. Oh, my favorite. This is not really with political things, this is with everything. I should give you some context with this. I. Uh, I used to have, when in the 60s, I had a subscription to um, I of Stone's newsletter, I of Stone newsletter. Now, I of Stone was a journalist. They had all these journalists, they, they run up to, to the microphone, and the, the spokesman, and they put the microphone there, they do a few re re record with it, and they go. I of Stone would not talk to any of these officials. He would go to the congressional record. Real journalism, right? So anyway, so that and then and then after well he passed and that, that ended then uh, and then I would uh, pay attention to Mother Jones magazine right this is in the early days uh, but then I they took a picture one time of the staff and I noticed it was one black person it was a woman she was a secretary I dropped my subscription sorry about that then the other thing I didn't have a subscription to but I paid a lot of attention to what I could get copies was covert action information bulletin now the reason why I like them is because they always had footnotes like that so we're talking this is still in the seven eighties. Like that, seventy days. But there's a rumor, you know. You know, Hillary started, you know, with with Goldwater or whatever it is. But some people point. They say that she had. I don't know. This is true. But they say she had a um, a subscription to Covert Action Information Bulletin, which was done by a lot of ex-CIA. But I won't get into that. So, but there's this thing. Um, uh, James Colbert. Uh, he's out of Japan. Well, he's a Canadian, I guess. He's but he's out of Japan. He lives in Japan. Lives in you know, married and whatever in Japan. And the Colbert Report. Now he gives. Uh, really detailed uh, footnotes, uh, no no advertising, no other stuff. That, and I really love this guy. I mean, talk, talk about research, I trust him. And one of my favorite uh, that I always get is uh, the go go out there, uh, Cold Fusion out of Australia. So what I'm saying, if you do, if you, if you just stay in one lane, you're not going to you're going to get a whole spectrum of things, right? So anyway, so uh, so I'm thinking that you know certain people have their beat. You know, uh, you, you know, that's why I mean, not oh, it's a black thought. Yeah, Black Thought. I like him a lot. And there's a, people have certain things that they do. Anyway, um, so I'm going like, well, you know, why do I have this kind? What am I doing? And what I do, because I have such a very long, whatever experience you want to call it, I'm trying to mix in the reality of, of uh, um, ADOS with actually my, the stuff that happened in my life. So I'm, I'm really informed by, of course, some, some actually. I'm informed by stuff in AWS, but I'm also um, trying to mix this with stuff that I know to be true. You know, like, for, I, I mean, I was an archivist for a very long time. For instance, uh, like, for instance, uh, Michael Clare in the 80s, you know, this is, I guess he has a son now that does stuff. But, you know, I would record him, you know what I mean? This guy was incredible. He was one I learned about low-intensity warfare. That's kind of it. The Greg Palace is running around here. I used to record him, too. I mean, a bunch of people. Um, you know, including Ron, Ron Dellums, all these people I've, I've recorded, you know, uh, all of, you know, everything that Samori and, 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 uh, and Lombe did with their, their things in New York. A lot, a lot, a lot of people. I even, I tell you this before, I, mean, I say this all the time, I, I gotta find the tape. But uh, I even recorded Thomas Sincata when he was in New York. I shook Thomas Sincata's hand. You shake my hand, that means you got some lineage to Thomas Sincata. Anyway, uh, 
so but so that's so I have a lot of experience with, with a lot of stuff you know and I'll go into some other time so sometimes when I speak I, I, I it sounds like I'm being egotistical but I'm not I'm trying to meld in real life experiences also when I started this channel it was really to sort of record I won't say record my life but record certain experiences so I'm, now I'm really trying to meld them together you know so that's what I'm doing but after all of that um, I realized I, I have a, a uh, I haven't well here at the university we had I'm, I'm in the Eastern Cape I go to the University of Fort Hare we had uh, we have philosophy department and and every, every they used to give these things every Wednesday then they have a competition or something like that well I, to get some money I don't I'm not a money person so I wasn't trying to win the competition but I like to do what it is so they had one one time and so I wrote a, I wrote an audio drama okay and it's called and this, oh let me back before I start this oh no let me start with this one of the times I was in Belize was it Belize? No, no. I was in um, Cross and Belize. It's the same place anyway. It's Livingston, Guatemala. Okay, it's a, you, you, you take a boat, a boat from uh, Puerto Barrios and you go over to to, to, to Livingston, right? And uh, Livingston, um, let me see. Oh, uh, anyway, Livingston, Guatemala. Great place. Anyways, I was there with this guy Jesus. You know, I'm hanging out with the locals, and and they have the the Griffin people. They have a, a drum that they make. They hollow out a log, and then it's a special drum that has fishing wire on it. Because fishing people, they have a fishing wire. It has a unique sound. Um, anyway, um, so I was up in 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 in, in the place where he, uh, Jesus had some logs, and so he was digging out the logs. That's how they had to dig out the log. So I'm so, so, you know, so I'm trying to help him. I got my little log. I'm trying to dig it out, man. Hey, it's, the reason why these brothers are strong is because they be doing work, you know? That was a hard... It, show you what I mean. I'm up here trying to dig this stuff out. At one particular point, you know, you don't talk, you just keep on... So Jesus starts to talk, and he looks at me. He says, you know, sometimes at night, I wake up in the middle of the night, and I do push-ups. Then I go back to bed. That's all he said. Years later, I realized what he was saying. He said, you know, you're weak. You need to do your push-up. Push -up. And let me tell you, all the, all the people, we need to do push-ups all the time. I just, just thought I'd lay that out there for you. Okay. Um, uh, so what was I saying about living in Guatemala? Uh, uh, um, anyway, uh, I got to skip that because I just lost that thread. Um, uh, so, oh yeah, when, when I was there, I think one of the things he also he said, I don't understand. You know, we have, you know, the birds in this area, they can fly to North America, you know, to the United States and Canada, whatever have you, but I can't. I need a, some documentation to, to get there. It's a good point, you know, it's a good point. And another thing, then, you know, I'm also an, an archivist of sorts. Anyway, uh, we had, uh, when, I was in, when I was at the uh, uh, University of Cape Town, uh, we had this group that we had uh, dealing with ar archival things. But one of the questions came up is, what do you do with all these artifacts that you know the European powers, if you want, the colonial powers took, you know, like uh, all these uh, sculptures and all the rest, and took just the art stuff. And I just talk about the, the minerals and stuff like that. They usually do, and uh, I said they need to, 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 you know, to deal with that, you know, give it back, whatever have you. I hear, I think that Nigeria is trying to get some of their art back, whatever it is. So. Um, some, so about a, a year ago, whatever it is, we had a competition in the philosophy department. Well, they had a competition in the philosophy department and the philosophy department. And so I wrote a play. I wrote an audio drama. And it's called uh, Uncle Bob and Miss Liz Lizzie in Re Reprochement. Reprochement. You know, you know, you know that big old word. Um, now, so this is the play. And what it's about, and this is the way audio drama, this is, where I, this is the way I deal audio drama. You know, you have... You have sound effects here, like that. Uh, these are uh, these are sound stage. Direct, well, let me just go down here. So you have sound effects on this side. You have the the name of the character that comes down the middle, and then the line that they the lines that they're um, they're they're saying. Now you see you might see blue on here. That's because this is a. a, a a copy where I actually went through. The, I go. I do this a lot, a lot. I go through the whole play, and then I, I explain why that line is in the underlying meanings of that line. See, it's, it's like work, you know. So even though this page, this is a ten-page uh, treatment, um, the actual play is only about six pages. So a lot of the stuff is just, you know, like this is a whole explanation of how, of, of what this whole thing is about. Um, uh, and I even say uh, when I was writing it, what music I play. As I'm writing, there's a thing called Tears of Joy by o o Orchestra Luna. It's from the, the soundtrack for the losers. The, the end credits. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece. Oh, let me, I'm going off the topic as usual. Anyway, so this is about Robert Mugabe comes to the um, Tumsu Buckingham Palace and he knocks on the door to speak to little Queen Elizabeth. 
And so that's what the play is about, and what the, the, the thing is about. And it's great. And it was fun to write. I really like. I really like writing. I like writing plays. And so basically, the thing is, Robert Mugabe has been sent by you know by other Africans. To, this is before he got all the poses and everything. And this was written. When was this written? Uh, this is uh, August 2017. Okay, um, just a couple years ago, August 2017. So and he's supposed to um, you know go to the not gonna, and he's basically telling. Uh, um, Queen Elizabeth, hey, you know the art. He, he starts off by saying it was like a, a, a not, he says, there's like a little misunderstanding. Maybe it was a, a, a language thing or something like. That, but you misinterpreted what those things that you were getting. You know what I mean? They you think as, as uh, tributes or gifts, whatever. Well, we were actually just lending it. We was leasing it to you, so you owe us some back money. <laughs> Here's the thing. I'm um, telling you about how, how, how they'll deal with this. And then he even says, you know those museum pieces, you, got, you, have, you, have, you, know, you know, you only show a certain amount of, 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 of stuff like 10%, whatever it is, when you go to these museums. But the rest of the stuff is shipped out all over the world. You make money off of that. You, just, you have a lot of space where you hide all these artifacts or whatever have you. He says, now, you know, you got that really good down pass. So we don't actually want the physical, we'll take some physically back for our tourist trade, but we don't really want it back. You have a good security system, so you should hold on to it. But you gotta pay. You gotta pay the licensing fee, the lease, the lease fee. <laughs> so that's the whole. That's the whole premise, um, and that's that goes on. Is anyway. It's, it's it's I enjoyed it like that, but I want to show you one one more thing. Now what I do, and I think it's kind of interesting. At the end of the place, if you notice, see that's my little thumbnail picture. I bring this up because I think a lot of times people be doing stuff and they don't acknowledge that there is them. You know, they try to hide and duck and dive and the rest of it. I think that's not that's not cool. I mean, you're supposed to speak up for for your works. If you believe that and you put it out there, if you're gonna this whole thing where you go on the internet and you have some no identity, you sniping at people. Come on, grow up. You know. So anyway, but let me just tell you about this this picture. It's interesting because. I did a, a course one time from the University of Cape Town Graduate School of Business, and we had it was like six weeks. I forget what it was, three months, two months, I don't, whatever it was, and um, we had a, had a final paper. What I did, uh, I'll get into some other time when I'll show you how I start to put these thumbnails on stuff. And so when I my cover page for my paper, I, should, I, should, I don't have it. I would have, I had my a thumbnail of my, of my photo, you know, under a, a little thumbnail of, of my, you know, of me. It was interesting because after and we turned the paper, and sometime I went and read it. The, the instructor came to me. She said, you know, I really like what you did. I said, oh, you know, I tried my best. Said, no, 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 no. She said, I mean, you put your, your picture on the, uh, on the cover. So when I read your paper, I heard your voice. I said, really? Audio drama. I said, really? That's interesting. Because you remember, I know, it's, it's, if you have a bunch of stack of papers, and you're just looking, tch, 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 but if you have your picture on the paper, when the person is reading your, your, your paper, they actually will hear you if they know. I mean, if you have a class, if you have a class at 300, of course, that's not going to do it. But, you know, anyway, so I just thought I'd bring that. But even so, so this, and I have many names that I use, but my, well, I, I use my, uh, my whole name on this. But I said this, this piece was written by, uh, by Brother Anthony John Sloan, right? Postgraduate student at the Historic University of Fort Hare, Faculty of Social Science and Humanities Communications Department, writing as Lajote, August 2017. Then I say, Lajote is a closer translation to, it translates to villain or hero. Well, Lajote, it, it, they max the language here, so it actually it has some, some Sutu, yeah, there's other influences in it, but Lajote is the, basically the, the name. But it's translates to either you can either the chote is either the villain or the hero in battle. This is a this is a warrior kind of thing. An enemy would say the villain. Comrades would say the hero. My translation is the warrior, the Anglo meaning of my last name. My last name is Sloan. Okay, so what I'm saying to you is that um, what we're doing the AD, well, what's happening at ADOS or anything, some people will look at you as a villain. Some people will look at you as a hero. And that's how you tell. If they look at you as a villain, then they're an enemy. If they look at you as a hero, comrades. Just thought I'd share that with you, a little, little thought. 
from the, from a little dispatch store from me, T, from the Patterson was taking a train to Tibet, speaking to you from a desk of the DOS, letting you know what I only suspect.